And so it says literally on the box, look, it says created in July of 2022. It's two years old. It's more than two years old. But I guess since I, I bought it on TikTok and I only paid $15 for it, I guess I can't complain too much, huh, deadheads? Hey, deadheads. Usually I do a fake opening here, but it's almost election time. So get out there and vote. It doesn't matter who you support. Please get out there and vote. Respect everyone for their vote. It's the most powerful thing we can do. And it gives us the freedom that we have so we can do awesome stuff like create these videos for you. So go out there and vote. Make sure you do it if you're able to, because it's very important. Anyways, welcome to the channel, New Deadheads, or welcome back. So today we're going to look at a $15 handheld. Yes, you heard me right. $15 that I picked up on TikTok. I wasn't expecting much because mm, I thought I'd get a light bulb, but guess what, guys? I actually got a handheld, and it's not that bad. It's not what I thought it could be either, though. Anyways, let's hop in. So here it is, guys. When I saw the sale for this and I picked it up, I didn't really expect much. I really thought, am I going to get a light bulb? I didn't get a light bulb. I actually got um, the console. In fact, I, I, I purchased two of these, a blue and a purple. And so here it is. Um, I bought two of these, $15 a piece, $35 shipped. It came really quick. It does have the game console logo on there and that same 640 by 480 resolution thing here. And it's got the DM screen. So let's take a look here. Made in China. D008, um, 128 gig card. D008, it's very familiar. SZ Dozer, they have a D008 and D008 Plus, so that's interesting. Looks like 32 bit HDMI, 10 simulators, D008 model. So let's take a look at the side here. So this is the purple. They do have white, purple, um, black, and the blue, um, all with the same buttons on all of them. Take a look back here, 32-bit ARM Cortex, A7, HD, HMI. I don't know what CPU is in here. I was hoping this would be the 3326, but that's telling me it's not. Since it's an 800 meg frequency, it's not that. Um, various simulators, PS1, SPI NAND, wireless controller connection, 3.5 inch IPS with a resolution 640 or 480. 2500 milliamp battery, four hours. So, game console, Shenzhen Model D008. Oh, look at that. Production date, July 27th, 2022. Wow, this is, this is old. Okay, so this has either been sitting somewhere. I've never heard of this model before, but it says it was produced two, over two years ago. So, I, I don't know, that's interesting. And then over here, HDMI, what, Wi-Fi? No, I don't think this, okay, I bet this don't have Wi-Fi. That's probably going to be wrong. And then there's that logo. So halfway decent box, doesn't look bad. Again, guys, keep in mind, $15 I pay for this. Let's get in here and see what this looks like. We've got an instruction on top, the DM, DM, D-008. All right, so... Uh, Here's our instruction manual. If you don't want complicated naming, you can continue to add games to the ROMs folder. Compatible with various simulators. Automatic recognition, not distinguishing between simulators. Okay, don't know what that's talking about. All right, well, here it is. Game download method. Files on the card are shown. Zip ROM. Retro on the card is a similar structure to the original one. So I don't know. Delete game. So we'll see here. So a little cover here. And no, okay. This, this doesn't look bad. Let's see what we got under here. So a USB A to C. It's got the purple. Okay. Halfway decent. Um, we have wipes. But no screen protector um okay there's, there's wipes in here but there doesn't seem to be a screen protector so 
I um, wonder if this one just got missed. I, yeah, no, no screen protector, but um, well, whatever. That's a disappointment. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Um, first off the bat, this is a nice color. It's a nice purple color. Um, this has a texture here. Plastic, plastic feels okay. Let's try these triggers since we're on the back. Not very loud, they feel pretty good actually. All right, not bad. The triggers are triggers are decent. Looks like the battery cover is removable, but it's not easily removable. I was hoping there'd be like a door here, but it doesn't look like that. Um, let's see here, this is the D008. So on the side here we have power and a reset button. 128 gig card, so there's an SD card. On the bottom we have a headphone jack and we have our DC. And it says 2.4 gig. Is that where you put a dongle in? I'm so confused. Okay, I don't know. It did say it takes wireless controllers, so I guess that's where you'd put a dongle for your wireless controller. Um, if you have it hooked in HDMI. So then we have our volume up and down. And then we have our HDMI port here. So, okay, so... Uh, no second SD slot. Okay, um, this is not a 3326, and uh, this is probably going to be one of those really awful CPUs. I wonder if it has Emuelec. This may be like the K36. I don't know. We'll have to boot this thing up and see. Um, looks like a speaker there. Kind of like the RGB 20 Pro. There's a little window here to see down at the bottom. In fact, let's, let's take a look at these side by side since they have a style like that. Voila! And so now we have the RGB 20 Pro. So you can see a little window here cut out right here at the bottom, uh, which is very visible because this is not very transparent. But look, look, it's almost like the same thing here. It's like cut out right there with that little section right there so you can see through it more than you can up here. So that's very interesting that it sort of has that same kind of style. I wonder if we're going to see more styles like this in the future. Um, this, of course, is a fantastic handheld with a beautiful screen, so I'm not expecting a $15 handheld to, to match up to that. But I just wanted to show that, that window there because it was pretty fascinating. Um, let's try the buttons. Very quiet. They are membrane. You can see the membrane down there. Not bad, guys. Very quiet buttons. Not bad. Let's see if they move all together. They do not. Color me impressed. All right. Let's see if this is clicky. Little click gear here. And then this little, what is that, like a menu escape function button. Boy, that thing is flat down there. I don't know if I like that. That's kind of, kind of not good. This D-pad, you know, the D008 from S is the Dizier, I don't want to say their name. This looks a lot like it. It was on the D008, their D008. It's very, it sits very low. Look at that, how low it sits. So, I don't know if I, it rocks good. It's got pretty good pivot, so it's just kind of low. I don't know about that, but I guess if you're trying to get it pocketable, but it is pretty low down there. Here's that logo. So yeah, this nice little texture here, little nice theme going on. This 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 casing's pretty nice, not bad, um, not bad at all. I wish it had the second SD slot, you know. And I wish now I know it's probably got a not a very good CPU in it, fed a 3326. But uh, really like these shoulder buttons. Um, these, I really like the buttons. They're really nice. The D-pad is, eh. And I don't like this menu button. It's way down in there. Well, let's get this thing booted up and let's see what kind of software we run into. It could be Emulec. It, it might be something worse. All right, so as we boot up here, let's turn the power on. There we go. We got the logo. Okay, not bad. Good start. Screen looks nice. All right, refresh rate looks good, color. Okay, is this like an Emulec? Oh, terrible music and that sound. Lots of games, PS1. 
Neo Geo, last played. Favorite search, all games, download, setting. Oh man, yeah, look at this. Now we can change the brightness. That noise is. Terrible music. And our language. Oh, I hate software like this. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Kazuya. Sonic, Sega, Super Famicom. All right, well, let's see if we get any menu. Nope. Yep, this is going to be awful software. Yep, nothing happening. Well, let's um, let's try some Game Boy Color here. Going to Adventure Island. I like Adventure Island. So I thought this was Game Boy Color. Huh. Interesting. Probably has pretty bad. Sounds good. Oh, that's playing okay, playing good. Yeah, this D-pad just sits a little low for my liking. It's nice and big though. Oops. Turn the sound down. Oops. It's loud, single speaker, but kind of tinny. Now remember guys, $15 in the TikTok shop. I haven't seen this on it on AliExpress. I'm gonna look for it though. Yeah, so even though I thought I was gonna play, you know, Game Boy Color, this is Game Boy. Now let's see what it gives us is for menu. Oh yeah, there's that same menu. All right, you can save, save and load and controls. I don't know why messing with controls would matter, but there, there's yeah, there's nothing here for this menu. Well, man, this was looking promising until the software. I mean, the hardware isn't terrible, and if there was some way to put, if you could put Rocknix or Arc OS on this thing, man, you'd be talking about what a deal. But I guess the price you pay, you're stuck with some really terrible software. So yeah, this, this looks good. It's not too scratched out looking. Um, no way to tell what resolution it's running in, but this is 4.3 screen, so it's probably running at full. I don't know if it's running on RetroArch that's been modified, or who knows what kind of emulator, or what core it's even using. But, it's playing fun. Let's see if we can find a real Game Boy Color game. Because that was not it. I'm going to go by the fact that these aren't in color. I bet it's mislabeled. Yeah, those are those are not Game Boy. Oh, look at that. They haven't mislabeled. So the Game Boy Color games are actually under Game Boy, and the Game Boy games are under Game Boy Color. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate. What do I got here? Anything decent. This music's annoying and you can't turn it off, it doesn't look like. So, you know, guys, this is this is why software matters. This is why I'm always talking about and so grateful to all the developers out there that work endlessly and tirelessly for free to improve software. You know, people that are that are just working like Moto and Gamma, the Rotnix team, the Batacera team. All the different developers out there, I, don't, I can't list all of them, but that are out there and just tirelessly adding to our community. So yeah, this, this screen looks nice. This is a pretty nice IPS screen. Pretty nice looking.
the sound has no in between. It just goes from a little bit too loud to just dead silent. So yeah, it's plain Game Boy Color and looks looks decent. Well, let's try some more games here and uh, see how it looks. In a real quick size comparison here to the original RG35XX and so you can see here um, just a little bit and I do have this case over this it's just a little bit shorter actually about the same the same height here um, between the two this this of course right here has um, garlic OS which is a superior um, software and this can still be found this is the original not the plus still be found for uh, under $40 pretty regularly sometimes even close to 30 and but again this is $15 so um, you know keep that in mind but yeah there's there's a size comparison between the two just to kind of give you the what we're looking at here as far as size goes all right let's look at some more footage So we'll play a little bit of Alien Hominid here on the Game Boy. And again, this screen is really nice screen. It looks nice, so I'll give it that. Again, this is the game console. And it's playing fine. It is very little border. I don't know if it's stretched because and this is loud, so let's turn this down just a little bit. Not a lot of uh, selection in the sound there. It just jumps. It sounds good though for uh, again, guys. I paid fifteen dollars for this in the TikTok shop. Now once again, this is the menu. There's nothing we can do here. We can make a save. That That's useful, but you know, there's not any chance here of changing. And this has that VT chip CPU that we've seen like in the R35 Plus. Um, the CPU is not great. There's no real good custom f uh, firmware coming out for it and not a lot of hope for it. But for a stocking stuffer for $15, I mean, it's plenty worse at $30 or $40. And again, The controls are not the greatest. Now let's take a look at some PlayStation. So we'll try some good old tried and trusted Crash Bandicoot. And I do expect PS1 to play okay on this CPU. Again, we have a little transparency down here, kind of like the RGB Pro, but not as transparent. Damn! I don't know how you say that. But this is a, a pretty nice screen. The screen is really nice. It's almost like edge to edge. So, really impressed with that. <laughs> so again, it looks good, sounds decent enough. Be. 
Let's get on with some game here. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you always muck in my mud? Look, I have a masculine... Now that we've got a really good Sega franchise movie going, so we need a Crash Bandicoot movie. And this is the third crash, so, you know, this is a little more developed for the PS1. And so it's playing this fine. Now there's no way for me to show, you know, oops, <laughs> to show its frame rate or anything, but I, I would say it's running at full speed. It, it certainly seems to be. And so again, this, this CPU and its lack of development and custom firmware and the limitations are the biggest setback. It's decent hardware. I mean, it's great hardware for $15. Um, but for the software, it's just the biggest limiting factor here, like it was with the R35 Plus. Although, I'd rather pay for this without the sticks, which were ne not needed on the R35 Plus anyways. If we're going to be using the same VT CPU, which is not really a good CPU, or at least hasn't had the development work put in. So guys, we'll take a look at a little more footage as I wrap this video up. Alright, so as we play some Super Nintendo here, and we play some Mickey Mania, let's talk about what I did like about this. And more the price. Um, this is being sold on the TikTok shop for, for $15 plus shipping. I picked up two of these for a total of $35 shipped. Um, I think this is a, a pretty nice um, potential gift, Christmas gift. It is not completely awful. It has a nice form factor. It's very similar to the R33S. I was kind of hoping that it was going to be the R33S in a different shell, but unfortunately that's not the case as we have the single SD slot and we have this much less capable VT CPU inside of it. Um, but I did like the shape and form factor um, of this. I like the price of it. And then the best thing about this handheld, hands down, is the screen. The screen is gorgeous. It's really good looking. It's got this edge to edge. And it looks sharp. It's at 640 by 480. We're in a 4.3 uh, ratio and just really, really looks good. Um, so I give it that. There's a lot of stuff not to like. Um, you know, again, if you have dealt with any other handheld ever that is of decent quality, especially if you've tried the MiU or Ambernick 35XXH, you just know that software makes a ton of difference. And this does not have the software. The hardware, it's not awful. The sound is pretty good. The build quality seems okay. It's not bad. The buttons and triggers are decent. They're not great. Um, but the buttons aren't connected, as we showed earlier. And um, the speaker sounds pretty good. Um, there's some misprints. It does not have Wi-Fi. Or if it has Wi-Fi, there is no way to access it. So if it is in there... There's no way to access it in the software. And so there's a lot of issues with this, which would make this a complete bust at anything above $30. But for $15, yeah, I, I think this is not bad. I mean, I would probably, you know, not be dissatisfied if somebody gave this to me um, for Christmas. I wouldn't hate it if I'd never picked one up. Now, if I'm a, a retro gamer that has Definitely a lot of experience with these handhelds. Yeah, I'm probably going to be like, man, this thing is trash. But again, I always try to look for some good things in it. And again, this has a nice look and color. It's got nice plastic to it. It's at a very, very favorable price. And um, yeah, besides the terrible ROM selection, the, the inability to add ROMs, even though it says you can, I couldn't get any of them to play. And the uh, software, this thing does... It would have had a lot of potential. Anyways, guys, this has been our look review at the Dium Model D008. 
um, that's selling on TikTok right now for $15. It is sold out currently. I don't know if they'll have more stock. Um, but if they do, then hopefully you're able to pick one of these up. If you're interested, I've got a link in the description. Remember to hug your loved ones and love your hugged ones because tomorrow is never promised. We'll see you next time, deadheads. Head Fred out.